We were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Complete for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. In honor and peace to the people of the earth. We praise you. Bless you. from the Acts of the Apostle. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One, and ask that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance just as your readers did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand. Through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know Him is to keep His commandments. Those who say, I know Him, but do not keep His commandments, are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Yet somehow he was now alive. 
He had somehow defeated death. He had somehow triumphed in a way that seemed impossible. Put simply, and this was the basic message that was proclaimed, he was killed and now he is alive. That was the core, that was the essence, the heart of what they couldn't wait to tell others. But it wasn't long before they had to wrestle with the meaning of it all, trying to figure out what Jesus' death and resurrection meant, meant for them, for others, and for the world. And 2,000 years later, we are called to do the same. If I asked each one of you, what does Jesus' death and resurrection mean? I probably get a lot of very similar answers. Answers about salvation, redemption, forgiveness of sins, reconciliation with the Father, opening up the gates of heaven, and other things besides. And those answers wouldn't be wrong. We as a church have come to understand those events, the Paschal Mystery, in precisely these and similar terms. But today I'm asking, asking you to consider the death and resurrection of Jesus in a much more personal way. You see, we all can say the words. We can all say that we believe in what those words are attesting to. But it's important that we don't simply stop there. That the meaning we give to Jesus' death and resurrection is not just a textbook answer. That it's not just simply a formulation of a statement of faith. Rather, we each need to come to a much more personal, subjective understanding, one that invites us to take the next step. What does Jesus' death and resurrection mean to each one of us? In other words, it's really not enough to just accept the fact of the resurrection. Rather, if we want to truly live out the faith we all so readily profess, we must try to discover how our belief in the resurrection of Jesus impacts our individual lives, how our belief in the resurrection shapes how we think and see and act, and the changes it makes within us that separates a faith-filled life from just simple words. My friends, Jesus' death and resurrection is not meant to be embraced in a theoretical way. It's meant to be lived out. It's meant to be reflected in the choices that we make and the things that we value. Do we walk the walk and talk the talk? What does the death and resurrection of Jesus mean to you and to me? me? And what does it mean for you and me? What simply does it concretely make a difference in how we live? The early church had to navigate these same waters, and we are invited to do the same. Maybe a good starting point is what we're about to celebrate in a few minutes, the sacred meal that we will soon share from this table. And we will have an opportunity once again to have the sacrifice of Jesus made present to us, once again have an opportunity to commune with our God, the resurrected Jesus, who comes to us as real food for the journey. That's why we come to Mass each week, to get the only thing that we cannot get anywhere else, no Amazon Prime, no delivery by UPS. If you want the bread of life, you need to come to Mass to get it. Those first Christians understood the significance of that meal, and many lost their lives for that belief. And that should tell us something. You see, Jesus isn't just someone we simply think about from time to time. And His death and resurrection isn't just some kind of abstract idea that we have in our minds. And he sure isn't some charismatic dude who told us a really good story and we're to keep telling it for 2,000 years. Rather, Jesus has risen. Christ is alive and Christ is present among us all. That was very clear to those first eyewitnesses. And their testimony and preaching had a dramatic effect on all who heard it. And their words still echo among us today, some 2,000 years later. And once again, in a few minutes, Jesus will come to us in an incredibly sacred and profound and mind-boggling way. Yet He comes to us in a tangible, concrete way, desiring that we might, just might, become what we eat. My friends, Jesus died, and Jesus rose. And Jesus left us this holy meal, one of the last things that he did while he walked 
this earth. Peter pled with his listeners to repent and be converted. To repent means to change our ways. To be converted means to change directions. Living out the meaning of the death and resurrection of Jesus means seeing the world in a different way. Seeing things from Jesus' way. A way of loving God and one another fully each and every day and in every circumstance. Now together we will touch the faith and share. Sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God.
as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. With your heart. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to reward you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they claim holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory O son in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord O son in the highest similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins <laughs> do this in memory of them. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have helped us worthy to stand in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Sevio, and Daniel, our bishops, and clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. After the Savior's command and form of thy divine teaching, we can say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God and the glory of yours is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, we shall leave you. Give you look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will have been reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord with you. Amen. Lamb of God, take away our sins of the world, and our sins.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are they which call to the supper of the Lamb. Let's pray. Look with 
kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Our school's annual auction is next Saturday, April 24th, and is virtual this year. Online bidding begins this Sunday, April 18th at noon. Please support the school by bidding on the great items they have for you. You also won't want to miss out on the desert dessert dash. Have some fun winning a favorite dessert to enjoy on the day of the auction. Another exciting part of the auction is the paddle raise. We have a very generous matching donor for this event and hope to raise $100,000 to help offset our operating, operating expenses this year. Register, register for these events on the school's web, website. One last little bit of news. We have learned that this microphone has a bad chip in it, <laughs> <laughs> which means it's going back to the factory and being repaired for free. <laughs> The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go on the peace of the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. Amen.